Hey everybody, welcome back to Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, a video walkthrough brought to you by GameCola.net. Um, here today are Nathaniel Hoover and Michael Gray doing commentary. We were here like two minutes ago. Yeah. We're seamlessly continuing from the last video, Michael. Yeah, but eventually we're going to get somebody else in here. Uh, I think with chapter number four, Nikola Suprak is going to be showing up. And so he is, like, desperately trying to play the game and get all the way to that point in the game so he knows what's going to happen. That's good. That's very noble of him. We'll see if it works. Anyway, um, we are meeting the two mysterious villains. They look villainous. Yeah, they've got those villain outfits. Um, his name is Commander Sith. As in, you know, the Jedi are always trying to stop the Sith. I have no idea what he's just doing. It's like throwing a little tantrum on a chess set. He's using he's using a projector. Fa ha ha. I'm sure that's not actually what he sounds like. I think he sounds like that. I don't know. He's sort of a, maybe. He's sort of a ridiculous villain. I think at this point. All of the voices I've been going for recently just haven't been coming out the way I've been expecting them to, so I'll probably hold off and, and not do any voices anywhere for a while, you know, just for everybody's safety. Well, I forget which voice I did for this guy. I think it was something like, Oh, ha, ha, oh I can't believe it. Like, a, sort of a gaudy voice, but it ends up sounding like, you know, the baby from Family Guy, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, I see. And again, I'm trying to, you know, read a file, and the instant I show up, it gets shut down. Oh wait, it's opened. Oh, maybe it sounds like Doc Brown. He did say Great Scott. No, <laughs> oh, that's see, I can't even save the file. That's just awful. I'm gonna stop. I'm just not even gonna start. Oh. Although I, I can hear a sort of Stewie Griffin voice to him. Yeah, and we have, a, we have a name for this woman. Her name is Lynn. And these two people are from a foreign country. A country where everyone's skin is blue. Oh, now we have to solve a puzzle to get to it. Well, no, we were in the file, right? So now we're sort of stuck in wherever the file was put. Oh, now we need to solve a puzzle to get out of there. Yeah. Clever. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, there gives new meaning to the word flip phone. Their country's use of technology is very interesting. The chandelier, which is not conveniently placed over somebody's head. Yeah. So you'll notice um, what I did was I operated the projector and the painting screen in order to reach the bottom half of the screen. And I mention this for everybody who's using this as a video walkthrough. They're stuck in the game and they don't know how to solve the puzzle. That's how you solve the puzzle. Oh, he's going to put on Saturday morning cartoons! No. Saturday morning ice cream cone hair. He does have rather... Did he call us a sissy? No, Sissel. Oh, I see. Sissel, that is his name. Is that really a hero name? Sissel? C Cecil. Cecil, now that's a name for a hero. Yeah, um, I always pronounce it Sissel because we have a character named Missile, and Missile rhymes with Sissel. We have a character named Missile? We have a character named Missile, and unless Tell I... Tell me it's a dog. I want a dog named Missile. It's the dog named Missile. We are going to meet him in this video. No, you're kidding. Am I actually correct? You are 100% correct. <laughs> And he is basically the best character of the entire game. And another thing, they have poor taste in grapes. 
Well, I mean, there's there's a bunch of fruit on the jar, but he only goes for the grapes, so I'm not sure why. Because he likes grapes. Give the man a break. Well, I mean, I mean those apples. You know, they're they're lonely. Whoa. <laughs> All right, we have a telephone call. Sounds like a math word problem. The Miss Lynn problem. The infamous one that you tell all your students about, and you're like, you'll have to solve this at the end of the year. <laughs> okay, so this is the other assassin they hired to kill Lynn. One step ahead, Tango and his partner. Two steps back, Cash. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> he looks just like the other guy. He has glasses. He's different. Oh, obviously. I'm so sorry. I don't know. This is starting to look like an anime series that's running out of budget already. I mean, they did a recap in the first 20 minutes of the first episode, and now they're reusing characters that have the same... Well, I would sprite or character model as the other one. I don't know. Okay, well, I, I mean, it's... It's sort of different because these are characters who are unimportant and don't really need to have names. Because, I mean, as soon as we get rid of the hitman, we're never going to hear from him again. But he has a name. Yeah, and, and these blue villains, we're going to hear from them again. They, they'll show up, you know, like at the very end of the game, too, and become important. Oh well, back to the nice music. Very nice, relaxing music. See, you actually know how to do a video walkthrough, because when I've been playing my Space Quest Zero playthrough, which isn't technically a walkthrough, I've been zooming through the dialogue a lot faster than I should be. You actually give people the chance to read it. <laughs> so bravo for you. I'm impressed. That's something I was really worried with when I was playing the game. It's like, I'm not sure if people are going to be able to read this or not. I hope, I hope, I hope they can. Anyway, here's one step ahead. He is in the, uh... He, he looks to be several steps ahead and, and one couch uh, uh, seated. Yeah. He is in Lynn's apartment waiting for her to show up so he can shoot her. And he has already shot a couple of things in the apartment. Well, oh. just just for fun. <laughs> Never mind. I thought he shot her. No, this is a girl. He he has held her captive. You know, unless she's tied to the railroad tracks, it's not true villainy. Yeah. Well, you know, she's just like a just like a nine-year-old girl. He, you know. Anyway, he shot he shot the dog named Missile. I, I guess he didn't missile. Yeah. So let's talk to missile. So is this is, is this dog speak that we're translating here? Yeah, this is missile's soul. Uh, apparently, dogs have souls in this universe. Hmm. Yeah, I guess... I, I don't know what's going on with this universe. Well, Missile is an uh, important dog. Well, no, no, no. It's, it's the dog's thoughts that are reaching them. Yeah. Either way, we have another subject of argument in the comment section now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway... Da -da -da! <laughs> Missile's back. That took him like 10 seconds, and now he remembers everything. He's fantastic. We need theme music for the dog. Is there theme music? I can't actually hear anything. There is going to be theme music coming up in a little bit. Right now we just have the sort of spacey other world music, because we're in this weird spacey other world place. I'm not actually a dog fan, but that's a cute dog. Yes, and they use the word moxie. Five points to this game. Yes. 
Well, I, I understand that the, the game's creator has a Pomeranian, so, you know, he put his own dog in the game. A uh, family friend had a blind Pomeranian at one point that, uh, again, being blind, couldn't see anything and would walk around, bump into walls, and then start barking at the wall. As if, move out of my way, wall. Missile is going to be doing a lot of barking. <laughs> All right, way to go, Missile. What wonderful dog logic. He's going to think that way throughout the entire game. He's fantastic. That should be the name of this video, Wonderful Dog Logic. Oh, is there going to be a name for this video? <laughs> uh, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective Part 2 Wonderful Dog Logic. Okay, I'll, I'll add that subtitle now. Nice. I, I have the entire description and the entire name and everything already pre-written. Anyway, here's you what happened so uh, four minutes ago. Oh yeah, it's a walkthrough. Yeah. I was just going to say that I sometimes don't write my video descriptions until several months after they go up. We'll have descriptions going all the way up to chapter 7, and then that's it. And there are 18 chapters in total, so Missile barks at Santa Claus and the TV because they're making noise, which upsets the angry woman next door. If it barks again, I'll knock this wall down. That's approaching the general direction of the voice I imagined her with, but it's still... I'm gonna stop doing voices. Well, uh, I mean, let, let's wait and see what her character is like, and then we can um, get a better idea of what her voice should sound like. But yeah... I don't know. She was banging on the wall, yelling and screaming. I mean, there's only one kind of personality type that would cause that to happen, obviously. Well, uh, she's a writer, and she's up against her deadline. Tonight is her... De oh, man. Writers. That's why writers are such obnoxious people, especially when they write for video game websites. I mean, all they do... Oh, that's us. Oh, yeah. Uh... Yeah, so she's really cranky because her editor wants her to have the article in on time. Ooh, do we get to possess a donut? No. No? I hate this game. But we can, you know, uh, rock the cart so a donut falls down. Rock the cart, don't rock the cart, oh, rock the cart. I can't believe that rat just shows up, eats a donut, and nobody notices. That dirty rat. Camilla's just busy listening to her music, so she doesn't notice as somebody breaks into the house and shoots her dog. And why did he have to shoot the dog again? I mean, Missile wasn't doing anything. Missile wasn't even attacking him. Because the dog potentially makes enough noise to get people's attention. <laughs> Look at that, I'm dead. I'm kind of shocked to tell you the truth. Yeah. Welcome! It's okay if you shoot me, because I'll just be surprised. He's a friendly little doggy. dog. He speaks in large letters instead of capital letters. It's very unusual. Yeah, that's how this game uh, works. It's unusual and speaks in large letters sometimes. I like it. This is, everybody uses large letters rather than capital letters. Also, it has a thing where um, <laughs> whenever you do quotation marks, they always have the quotation marks which lean to the left. They're lazy quotation marks. Yeah. Or casual, casual quotation marks. Well, I'm just saying the way it's supposed to be, if you have the quotation marks which lean to one side, you know, the ones on the left lean to the right, and the ones on the right lean to the left. Or conversely, they do the opposite of what you did, and the world turns upside down. No, 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 no. 
Anyway, you'll notice what I did is, you know, I can um, make those headphones jiggle a little bit by uh, manipulating the umbrella. That's a phrase you don't often hear. Yeah. Okay, so we have this conversation. The lady next door is crabby. Is that a hint? Are we supposed to drop crabs on her? No. I'm certainly glad there's no one around here to drop crabs on me from overhead. Just like the villain in the first video. Yeah. No, what we want to do is make a lot of noise in order to upset the woman. Although I think that might be a puzzle for the next video. My next video? We're only halfway through this one. Don't set it up like we're about to end. Because then people will walk away and they won't even finish watching it. Well, check this out. You know, I use the umbrella to hit the headphones while she's busy picking them up. And oh, in the property damage already. Headphones don't work once you drop them in fish tanks, right? Let me go try it out. And she wants to blame Missile for this, which I think is kind of cruel. <laughs> I love it. This character keeps saying everything that I am thinking. I have never had this happen in a game before. <laughs> Anyway, that, that's part one of the puzzle. Now she can hear. Hooray, so she'll notice when there's a hitman coming through the door. And I'm going to try to knock a donut underneath the sofa. Most people try to avoid that. Yeah, but I'm actually going to try to do that on purpose. Waste of a donut. Well, as we notice that the rat, uh, I mean, the rat is going to come and try to eat the donut, right? So I think... Yeah, if you say so. ...point to that puzzle. I might actually be able to play this game and not have it all spoiled for me, even though I'm doing commentary on this, because I'm only half paying attention to everything that's going on. It's great. All right, come on, Santa Claus. Take me over. Take me over. So yeah, you Santa Claus to get over here. Oh, is that what that's supposed to be swirling around the wreath there? Yeah, it's Santa Claus. Okay, so the uh, okay. the rat and the donut are under the couch, and Missile starts barking at it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the dog is under the couch, unless you're calling the dog a rat. I'm so confused now. You, you said the rat is under the couch, and only the dog was under the couch. The rat was next to the couch. Oh, really? In any case, the dog goes under the couch to bark at the rat. Camilla goes under the couch to get the dog. And the cheese stands alone. <laughs> but my question is, who's going to eat the donuts? Because I think the bad guy is going to eat the donuts, which doesn't seem very fair. Now that is classy. I like it. Yes. Oh, you're right. I'm not dead. We did it! We did it. We did it. We, yeah, we did it. We did it. Hooray. We be in. Oh, I'm waiting for the big letters. Okay, no big letters. Can I ask a question? In big letters? Uh-oh, we're going to get a recap of the tutorial now. Oh no! No, don't run out of budget yet! <laughs> I'm just so amused by this dog. <laughs> to get donuts, yeah. I knew it! I knew the large letters were coming. Big words. Not fair, I want to get donuts. Okay, so what's gonna happen now? Well, let's see what's happening in the new future. The new future is now. Well, no, now we're in this weird, um, I guess, ghost world zone thingy. 
the new future is eventually. Yep. And here we go. Now we're now we're back to the future. You know what? That would be a great title for a movie or video game. Yeah. So we're we're here in the alternate future, but you know they're still sort of stuck underneath the couch. I guess they've been there for like ten minutes or so. Missile is still trying to bark, and she's like holding his head down. I think. <laughs> it's not gonna hurt you. You don't need to slowly approach and shoot the phone. Oh no, do you need to go back to the first level to redo that puzzle because now you've changed time somewhere else contemporarily with it and had another guy go thrown into your puzzle? Making sense? No, um, if you check the, the timer, which I don't think we have actually seen, so it, it's not contemporarily. Contemporarily? I don't know. It's not happening in a, a contemporal plane. I, I'm making up words here. Perhaps you're not. All right, there's Lynn. Wait, did, did we establish that there's something we need to do right now? Oh, just the the little thought bubble about death indicates that we should sort of be going that direction to help somebody. Mm hmm So I've got it here. Chapter number one took place at 7.02 p.m. Chapter number two, this chapter here, is 7.31 p.m. Oh. So to clarify, we're going around saving these people's lives, not out of the goodness of our heart, but because we're hoping they stay alive long enough to lead us to the end why we got killed and by whom? Yeah. Or I guess we know by whom. Uh, what point are you at in the video? Because I, my thing, the time. Oh no. Are you unsynced? Yeah. Did you unsync? I know. You are without a sync. I am not in sync. I am Backstreet Boys. Oh, Michael. What are we going to do with you? I am at 256, 7, 8, 9. Oh, thank goodness you're okay. Did she get taller? Lynn? Uh, I guess she's a little bit taller. No, that that person is just sort of short. Do you need a timestamp again? Yeah. Okay, so tell you what, go to 2330, and I'll tell you when to release. <laughs> okay. Five seconds. Release! 2330. Okay. Did it kind of work? Kind of worked. This is a thrilling video walkthrough for everybody. Fortunately, this is just the dialogue portion. But <laughs> just the dialogue, it's not like anything important. Yeah, it's not like, you know, oh, whoa, I was going to spoil what's going to happen. No. <laughs> and Dr. Duck for a hat. That's a pigeon, actually. But yeah. Uh, Dr. Duck for a pigeon hat. P pigeon for a duck hat. And head. There we go. Why do you have a fish tank right next to all this important electronic equipment? Like donuts. I guess they're not important electronic equipment. Still, you don't want your donuts to fall inside a fish tank. Wait, wait, Dead End Drive? Like 13 Dead End Drive? Like the board game? They are going to go to Dead End Drive, yes. But it sounds so pleasant there. Why would anyone go? I don't know. I thought they were going to go get chicken. I, I, you know, I'm up for going to the chicken kitchen. Our, our Taco Bell. You know, getting some food there. Do -do 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 -do. Anyway, um, this is a puzzle. You have to figure out how to uh, get to the music box. 
So you do a trick on Santa Claus, and Santa Claus is going to be zooming. <laughs> so now I'm close enough to reach the last. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and there's the, there's the music box right there. That's clever. I like that. However, she's not, she's not going to notice it. You know, it fell, you know, two inches away from her, but she did not notice. Well, it's, it's, it's three-dimensional, so it didn't fall on top of her. It fell next to her. You still think you would hear, like, a box falling, um, looks like four or five feet onto a tree? Possibly destroying one of the ornaments. Yippee! Do -do -do -do. So you just got the uh, all-important music box. Hooray! Now you can put the turtles to sleep as you're walking around the overworld map. All right. I think he's going to stay here. Her missile's going to stay inside. She's, she's not going to um, take him with. Our hero is kind of stupid, I would say, because, you know, she leaves the apartment and now he's stranded here in the impart in the apartment. But he's got missile. What else do you need? Well, you know, he does kind of want to get to the junkyard and save Lin's life. Again? Yeah, but, you know, Again. He, can't use, he can't use the phone because the receiver's stuck. You know, he could have hitched a ride with the little girl, but he didn't. How will he get out of here? Stay tuned for chapter number three. Oh, good ending. I like it. <laughs>